ApoB slash LDL, we'll basically use those terms interchangeably in this podcast. They're not exactly the same thing, but they're looking at the same metric. They're looking at the same sort of particles in the human body. They don't always correlate with atherosclerosis, especially in people who have other indicators that their vasculature is healthy or that they are metabolically healthy. This is just fucking stupid. You can look at... Um... You can look at different populations uh, and see what their LDL score is, and you predictively see an increase in uh, the rate of atherosclerosis. Uh, I think once you get to over 150 milligrams of LDL uh, per deciliter, um, you see like a 64% rate in uh, people who have atherosclerosis. And uh, over half of those people also have atherosclerosis in uh, multiple arteries. So it's not just in their heart. You might, you, you'll see it like all over their body. In humans that are metabolically healthy by a fasting insulin or by HDL to triglyceride ratio or by CAC scores, which is a coronary artery calcium score of zero. So CAC, CAC scores are mostly bullshit. You typically only see um, calcification at the later stages of the disease. So CAC scores don't really tell you much. Uh, people can have very, very blocked arteries and have a, a coronary calcium uh, index of zero. It, it's just that the plaque hasn't calcified. So I, I don't know why he'd care about CAC scores that don't really tell you much. Um, and, and on top of this, he he's giving people this idea that, oh, well, people who are like metabolically healthy, they, you know, they don't get atherosclerosis. That's bullshit. Uh, you see atherosclerosis in otherwise healthy populations, people, no diabetes, uh, normal body weight, uh, non-smokers, all that shit. Uh, and you see atherosclerosis, atherosclerosis in children. So uh, you can even see it in fucking babies. So if a mother has a very high LDL score, um, their babies will also have a plaque in their arteries. So if atherosclerosis only presents in people that have metabolic dysfunction, they have diabetes or something, please explain to me how fucking children get it that are normal body weight, uh, you know, nor like physically active, eat well uh, for the most part. Um, like it, it's just horseshit. Oh, we don't see any real consistent sort of relationship between LDL levels and incident cardiovascular disease. Yes, so you do. AOB slash LDL are that's a complete and utter lie. You absolutely do. He's full of shit. Causing atherosclerosis. Why does this correlation? Why does this association break down in people that are metabolically healthy? And this has been my concern. This has been my problem my sort of pushback to the mainstream ApoB limit thinking for many years now that it must be taken in context. I mean, years ago when I was on Joe Rogan's podcast, I showed him a graph of the Framingham study and I said, look, look at it, what happens to the relationship between LDL cholesterol and cardiovascular disease if you stratify people in Framingham by HDL, which is just a proxy marker for some degree of metabolic health. It's not perfect. The relationship completely changed. HDL is a non-causal factor in uh, disease risk. So... By the way, you still see this relationship with increasing LDL, you see increasing risk of heart disease. So he he manipulated the data to make it seem as though, oh, it's not as significant as it looks. Uh, well, OK, even when you do that, there is a relationship with LDL and uh, risk of CAD. So like he, he's showing the chart on screen changes in people that have high HDL. That's a single marker. You enumerated probably 12 markers, yep. right? So if you look at any marker that indicates metabolic health, you will see the relationship. Yeah, so like, again, we know HDL is non-causal. Uh, people who have a lower body fat percentage usually have higher HDL scores. Um, and typically HDL is also going to be affected by your total cholesterol score. So if your total cholesterol goes up, your HDL also goes up. But uh, we know it's non-causal. You can look at Mendelian randomization studies. Uh, people with low HDL genetically don't have increased risk of heart disease. 
Um, HDL is very, very much genetically determined. Uh, they've also done drug trials. They've created medications specifically for uh, increasing HDL. And again, they, they do nothing. Which means LDL and cardiovascular disease either massively attenuated or completely fall away. So what is going on here? How can LDL be causing atherosclerosis? And I think it's just, if we get into this idea of semantics, and I don't think we need to go too far down this rabbit hole, but that's the question that we're really asking overall. That's the question I was trying to ask Derek on his podcast. And that's the question that I think has been glossed over repeatedly by mainstream medicine. And I think this is because... No, uh, you're a lying idiot and nobody takes you seriously. And it is mathematically impossible for LDL or ApoB to not be causally related for, uh, to heart disease. Uh, you can look at meta-analyses on this topic. Um, any method of LDL lowering reduces your risk of heart disease. That can be from dietary interventions. That can be from drug interventions. That could be to uh, genetic predispositions. So if you just genetically have lower cholesterol, uh, you're going to have lower risk of heart disease. And the efficacy of LDL, uh, the efficacy of heart disease prevention is based on the extent of LDL lowering. And this is across all research and all methods of LDL lowering. It could be from dietary intervention. It can be from uh, weight loss. It can be from uh, statins. It can be from PCSK9 inhibitors. Uh, and it can be from, again, genetic differences between people. The Your risk of heart disease is based on the extent in which you can lower your absolute magnitude of exposure to LDL. I, again, it is mathematically impossible for LDL to not be causally related to heart disease uh, just due to that fact. So you're completely full of shit of these Mendelian randomization relationships between LDL and cardiovascular disease. And this is why I really wanted to go on Derek's podcast. Now he brought up a bunch of stuff that he didn't tell me we were gonna discuss, and this is why we're having this podcast with you and I, kind of filling the gaps there. But if you look at the high end of a Mendelian randomization, which is a type of study that looks at genetic polymorphisms that lead to, in this case, higher levels of LDL, and genetic polymorphisms that lead to lower levels of LDL, is there a relationship between LDL level and cardiovascular disease? And indeed- Yes, there is. There is, if you look at some of these studies. now. The problem that I had with this, and this is what I told Derek on the high end, was that, hey, the people at the high end of Mendelian randomization, those are people with something called familial hypercholesterolemia, which is technically a... Here we go. Uh, so he's saying LDL doesn't play a risk in heart disease, but, oh, I, I guess if you have high enough LDL, it plays a role in heart disease. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, secondly, you can look at uh, cholesterol lowering trials can be, again, with any drug or any dietary intervention. Uh, the success of the intervention is based on the extent in which they can lower LDL. So again, if you're going to claim it's not causal, then please explain these findings. You can't. You're just a liar. You're full of shit. Uh, secondly, these Mendelian randomization studies also look at people with low LDL. So again, why are the people with low LDL protected and the people with higher LDL uh, not protected? They have increased risk of disease. Uh, even people at normal levels of LDL have higher rates of disease than people who have genetically lower cholesterol. Again, he can't explain this, so he's just gaslighting and lying to everybody. A quote phenotype, but it's really a genetic thing. This has always been distasteful to me. And as I mentioned on the podcast with Derek, to Derek, this is what I wanted to go on and educate him about. People with especially monogenic familial hypercholesterolemia, which means familial hypercholesterolemia caused by one single gene mutation, have very clear changes in the way that their immune cells function. The, the propensity of the macrophages to take up LDL in the vessel wall is, is, is much higher. Yes, because they have more LDL, you fucking idiot. So people with familial hypercholesterolemia don't just have high LDL. They have an immune system that wants to gobble it up and form plaques more avidly than someone that No, no, that's just total bullshit. They have more permeation of LDL through their endothel endothelium, and uh, you get a an immune response from that. doesn't matter what fucking uh, phenotype you have, your, your immune system is going to respond. Macrophage, uh, yeah, macrophages are going to attack the LDL, and then they're going to become foam cells and all that shit doesn't have it. So it's, a, it's an inaccurate representation I think, of what's going on there. And as you mentioned, we can talk about this later in the podcast. We've, we've really seen this play out to some extent. So he, he ignores the Mendelian randomization studies that look at, uh, you know, people with phenotypes with lower LDL. The, this guy is just a gaslighting dipshit.
said recently with Dave Feldman's study. I had Dave on the podcast. We talked about his the beginning of his recent study with mean mass hyperresponders, which are people who eat low carb, something that I'm not a huge fan of, something that Mike is not a huge fan of. But we know that when you eat low carb in some some, some subset of people, your LDL will go high. And I was strict carnivore, my LDL. Yeah, uh, those are people with very rare genetic mutations. Uh, they probably have some kind of dysfunction with their LDL receptor uh, or their metabolism changes to a greater degree than, than a normal person. And those uh, lipoprotein molecules end up transporting to a greater extent to uh, get fat to like your muscle cells and shit and that raises your LDL. That's a weird genetic mutation that not many people have. So I don't know why he's bringing this up. And uh, his LDL, wasn't it in the 300s? Like, that's what you'd expect if you're eating nothing but, like, fucking meat and lard and shit all day. But that's not unusual. LDL was much higher than it is now. And so they took people who were mean mass hyperresponders, that's his name for people who have high LDL and setting up a low-carb diet, and he did CCTA, which is basically coronary angiography, like CT coronary angiography. It's even more specific than a CAC, which is a coronary artery calcium score. And what he found with those people was that they did not have really any correlation between their level of LDL and the incidence of coronary vascular disease that they saw on a CCTA. And then he did this really genius thing. He compared them. Yeah, so uh, the absolute magnitude of exposure of LDL is what's going to determine your heart disease risk. So uh, how long were these people on a low-carb diet? Oh, yeah, I started doing keto like two weeks ago, and my LDL is like through the roof. Yeah, uh, if their LDL wasn't that high for a long period of time, no shit, you're not going to see a correlation. Were these people on low-carb diets since they were fucking born, dipshit? Um, to a group at Miami Heart, which is a group of people that had a bunch of uh, CT coronary angiograms that didn't have elevated LDL, quote, and there was the exact same incidence of cardiovascular disease in people with, quote, average LDL levels, and people with significantly elevated LDL levels were lean mass hyperresponders. So again, we're starting to see this play out. That so he's talking about a very small subset of the population with a rare genetic mutation and is saying, because we have this stupid research that doesn't track their long-term fucking diet, uh, you know, diet plan, these people won't look, are on a, they weren't on a low-carb diet their entire fucking lives. And, and then they're, they're saying, well, we don't see a correlation here. How in the fuck does this relate to your average person, asshole? That this doesn't. And, and again, by the way, this does nothing to disprove any of the fucking other research on LDL. Nothing. All you're doing is finding a weird subset of uh, the human population that's very small, putting them in very strange circumstances where they're eating a low carb diet because they're idiots. Ha like it, it, it's it's unrelated. None of this debunks the lipid hypothesis. Always work, especially on the high end. And you know, in these Mendelian randomization, people on the high end are, are, are excuse me, uh, familial hypercholesterolemia. But here's Dave's cohort, which I think. Do you remember how many people were in the study? It's probably like they had they had seventy or eighty people, um, and they didn't. There, there's no correlation between. It was you know, 80. Oh, 80 people! Wow, that's so many. Uh, I think the largest. Uh, I think the largest cohort for uh, a heart, like a heart disease trial, was the MR Fit screening study that had over three hundred thousand uh, participants. And, and guess what they found? There was a relationship between LDL and fucking heart disease. Wow, what a fucking surprise! I found eighty people with a rare genetic disorder that was follow that were following a diet for a very short period of time. And I couldn't find any correlation between their current LDL uh, cholesterol score and plaques in their arteries. Whoopie fucking diddly do. Nobody cares. It was 80, yeah. 80 people. There's no correlation between cardiovascular disease. So this is where we are, and this is where Mike and I start asking these questions. So why don't you, I'm curious, Mike, like what, what have you seen with regard to this? Because there are, why don't we just dig into a few of the studies that have been done looking at relationships between LDL cholesterol and cardiovascular disease in people who have an absence of some of these risk markers, right? So either people with zero CAC scores, so zero calcified plaque on a coronary artery calcium score, or other metrics that might suggest this, because this is- uh, I, <clears throat> By the way, most people have a CAC score of zero, most people. Um, and uh, I think nearly half of the people with a CAC score of zero end up getting fucking heart attacks. 
CAC score doesn't mean shit. This is actually pretty interesting data that I think people need to know about. So there's, a, there's quite a few interesting studies here that actually look at this. And so we have one with the, that was done by Dave Feldman and Matthew Budoff together. Uh, and then we also have one looking at familial hypercholesterol. By the way, Dave Feldman is a lion cocksucker, if anybody doesn't know who Dave Feldman is. As well. And basically what we see with specifically the Dave Feldman study, they had people with a mean LDLC. So the average LDLC was 272 milligrams per deciliter and a max of 591. So something to put into perspective here is this is not total. The impact of carbohydrate restriction induced elevations in low density lipoprotein cholesterol progression of coronary atherosclerosis, ketogenic diet trial study. Um, they they followed these people for one year uh and this is a trial of only 100 people this is their sm like this is their silver bullet cholesterol this is just ldl cholesterol and in these in these studies hdl also tends to be high so the total was significantly higher and what they see is that there's no relationship in the study between LDLC elevations and plaque formation. They're not actually seeing. Yeah. Uh, heart disease takes decades to fucking develop. You follow these people for one single fucking year and you expect to see massive changes in their, in, in plaque buildup. Like, do you, are, who the fuck is this that asshole who did that fucking uh, Oreo cookie study? This guy is a fucking dickhead. Any any relationship? And there, there's an interesting graph where they show, like, you can see the LDL values, you can see the black scores, and they're not correlated by any capacity. Some of the highest scores have zero black burden. So that's the first thing and with, with these people, very high LDLC levels, and we're not seeing this the, the positive or the CAC scores greater than zero, or we're not seeing elevation in black burden overall as the CAC TTA or the CAC scores, which is, that's a huge, that's, that's a huge uh, thing to see because ideally if you have this, if LDL is directly causative in cardiovascular disease, you would see, you would. Okay. The, these people are just actually fucking deranged. Um, uh, let's take a look. Hundred relatively lean individuals adopted a ketogenic diet. Subsequently exhibited hypercholesterolemia with LDLC uh, two below ninety. This is just poorly written. In association with otherwise good metabolic health markers, were enrolled. Blah blah blah. Um, do they have any graphs? They, why did Paul say there, you could see a graph, there's no graphs. Um... Exclusion criteria, elevated uh, blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, hypothyroidism, renal insufficiency. Um, use medications that elevate LDL, anabolic steroids, that makes sense. Use of lipid-lowering supplements or medications, statins, red yeast, garlic. Uh, molecularly defined familial hypercholesterolemia. Okay, so basically people who are at higher risk of heart disease because of elevated LDL are restricted from the study. So they selected people who have pretty normal LDL levels because if they had outliers that were, you know, higher at like maybe 250, 300, those people would probably end up having um, progression uh, in in their atheromas, even if they're like 18. 
history of malignancy, lone allergies, yeah. Um, so, uh, this is hilarious. I, I don't even understand. Like, this is so poorly written. It, it's strange. This is in the inclusion criteria. LDLC at or below uh, 190 milligrams per deciliter on most uh, recent laboratory uh, on current diet. How is, like, so they're excluding people who had higher LDL levels. Um, they, they just arbitrarily decided if anybody had a... Uh, an elevated LDL above 190 uh, from going on this diet, they're excluding them. But then they put this in the inclusion criteria. Why isn't this in the exclusion criteria? Th that's fucking weird. Grim Reaper. Oh, that's funny. This, uh, they didn't even, this isn't even a completed paper. They haven't actually published the trial findings. So I, I can't even look at the fucking data. So this is just pure garbage. So basically they set up this trial uh, in a way where they would ensure they wouldn't see any increases in plaque volume uh, because they excluded subjects that raised their cholesterol too much. So... That is fucking retarded. Or the CAC scores, which is that's a huge that's that's a huge uh, thing to see because ideally, if you have this, if LDL is directly causative in cardiovascular disease, you would see you would assume a linear relationship or some type of relationship, not necessarily always linear, where the higher levels that you get, the higher the higher the plaque burden, and you're not actually seeing that. Another study that we have here, it's titled "Absence of Coronary Artery Calcification in Middle-Aged Familial Hypercholesterolemia Patients." out after sclerotic cardiovascular disease, what they basically show is that about 45% of these people don't actually show cardiovascular uh, CAC score greater than zero. So what they say here in five of nine included studies, so this N equals 970, so 1,000 people almost were looked. Most people have a CAC score of zero. That providing on-treatment lipids, uh, the pooled on-treatment low-density lipoprotein cholesterol level was 158 milligrams per deciliter. So the people's average LDLC while they were on treatment for the high lipids was 158 milligrams per deciliter. They said among these nine studies representing these 1,176 asymptomatic uh, heterozygous uh, really hyperpressure patients, the mean pool prevalence of CAC equal to... I, I don't know why they keep making a big, uh, big deal about CAC scores. Again, most people uh, have a CAC score of zero. Zero was 45%. So basically, you have about 1,176 people that have... Uh, familial hypercholesterolemia, so they have the genetic condition that leads to high cholesterol. And basically, uh, they had a, the average LDLC of 158, which would be considered quite high by modern standards. And their CAC score is 45% of them is zero. So 45. Yes, most people have a CAC score of zero. CAC means nothing. So uh, I, I don't even know why the fuck they care about CAC scores. Like what you'd care about is clinical outcomes. So uh, do they have higher risk of uh, fucking heart disease? Do they have more angina? Do they have more heart attacks, strokes? Who the fuck cares about the CAC score? It's not even a good scoring system. People with FH, with familial hypercholesterolemia, and elevated LDLC levels are not seeing CAC scores greater than zero, and they're middle-aged people. It's not in young, young familial hypercholesterolemia people. A again, most people have a CAC score of zero. Uh, just because you don't have any cal calcified plaques, I, I keep repeating myself, but these people are just fucking assholes. So you have, you have incidents, you have studies like this. Then there's a variety of other studies where basically there's some really interesting ones where they're stratifying people's, uh, their LDL values into different categories. And then they're basically seeing that in each category, whether LDLC was 77 milligrams per deciliter or whether. So again, uh, 
CAC scores again. CAC scores are bullshit. Who the fuck cares about CAC scores? There's 190 milligrams per deciliter. Again, LDL, not total cholesterol. If their CAC scores were zero, they basically had a minimal risk of cardiovascular events and, and uh, they weren't really like, they weren't. A, a huge percentage. I, I think it's something like 30% um, of people, they, they go on to have heart attacks even though they have a CAC score of zero. So again, what like they're deliberately avoiding any of the data that actually looks at clinical outcomes. They're just looking at an arbitrary fucking uh, test uh, because that's the only way they can gaslight people into thinking LDL isn't related to heart disease. We weren't really showing increased heart attacks and all this type of stuff with with even with these high LDLC levels. So basically, what we're seeing here is that the number one most important thing is do you have black burden? And maybe LDL is associated with black burden. Well, we know it is. And to some extent, but the association doesn't necessarily mean direct causation. And we're there. The, what happens is again, we know there is direct causation. This is because of meta analyses of randomized trials, uh, prospective cohorts, Mendelian randomization studies, and they all show the lower your LDL, the lower your fucking plaque burden. There's inter individual differences. But the lower your your cholesterol, the lower your fucking plaque burden is going to be. These people are fucking delusional nut jobs. When we start to get into the weeds with these studies, and you really can get into the weeds with these studies, what you see is because LDL is involved in plaque formation, there's going to be associations. But it doesn't necessarily mean that LDL by itself is just a driving factor for plaque formation and cardiovascular disease. There's a please explain. Okay, please explain to me why people with the lowest LDL scores below seventy never get fucking uh, plaque buildup. Please explain that to me. It's weird. Uh, they'll say, oh, LDL doesn't seem to be causally related with plaque burden. Then please fucking explain to me why people with an LDL below 70 never get fucking plaque buildup, but people above that level do get plaque buildup. And you see increasing percentages of people with fucking plaque burden, the higher their fucking LDL is. If it's not causal. Fuck you. You're just lying. They're just fucking flat out lying. A variety of other factors that are occurring that are leading to changes and modifications in LDL, which we can talk about. And that's usually driven by metabolic dysfunction and by inflammatory signaling and oxidative stress. So again, uh, notice the gaslighting tactic here. He's saying there's confounding variables that affect plaque burden. Yes. Obviously, if you're obese, diabetic, have high blood pressure, shit like that, that is likely going to contribute to your plaque burden. That doesn't mean LDL isn't causal. You're just gaslighting people into thinking about confounding variables when LDL clearly is the principal fucking variable. Like, like again, he's just deliberately lying that modify LDL particles trigger immune response, and then you start to get plaque formation. And so when, if we just hyper-focus on, on these LDL values, and then we're like, oh, we need to just smash LDL all the way down, less than 30 milligrams per deciliter with drugs, so we can lower our risk, it's like, I guess- Well, guess what? None of those people have plaque buildup. Like, he, he's saying this, but none of those people have plaque buildup. That's one way that you could go about it, but it's kind of a crude fashion to go about treating heart disease when we need to, like the LDL- He, okay, he, he just admitted it. He just admitted he's lying. He just admitted lowering LDL to very low levels, like 30 milligrams per deciliter with uh, dietary intervention and drugs prevents plaque buildup. He just admitted he's lying. He admitted that LDL is the fucking common denominator here. Oh, itself needs to be modified and have this inflammatory signaling process and all this type of stuff go on to actually have this effect. And if anything, in different animal studies, when you knock out the inflammatory signaling through genetic deletion pathways, or you adjust some of the, some of the different, um, some of the different receptors and antibodies and things like this. So he's mentioning animal research here. Uh, inflammation seems to be a bigger factor in heart disease, uh, uh, in heart disease, um, in, in animals, in humans, we don't have that data. It seems to have a moderate, uh, association at best. You actually completely eliminate or vastly eliminate atherosclerosis in these animals, even when they have really high uh, LDL. Gee, uh, tell me, are human beings mice? Uh, I, I didn't realize that we were literally rodents. Uh, may maybe this, am I retarded? But I, I thought we were a species of ape, not rat.
So what the fuck do I care about rodent research, you lying dickhead? If you look at the human research, inflammation has a moderate effect at best on heart disease uh, on heart disease um, progression, um, and, and in all likelihood, it. It, it really doesn't play much of a role at all, uh, especially considering when you have a- elevated LDL, you that also correlates with elevated levels of inflammation. So uh, again, the common denominator here is LDL. This guy, again, is deliberately trying to gaslight everybody by saying, you know, if we fucking, you know, breed rats to have a weird gene that raises their fucking C-reactive protein or whatever, they have more... I don't care about rats, dipshit. Values because again, it's it's the the, the atherosclerosis and cardiovascular disease is kind of like a cake. There's a lot of ingredients that have to go into this to have the effect. Instead of just- no, there's only one ingredient, only one LDL. You even admitted it. You admitted it in the fucking video, and you're lying. You wouldn't just say, oh, it's just the frosting on the cake that's causing the problem because that's what we see. It's like, no, there's multiple pieces going into making this problem. And we need to understand those pieces all together instead of just really hone in on one, throw all of our eggs in one basket, and then try to smash it down. Yeah, well, guess what, fuckhead? Um, They've done trials with uh, anti-inflammatory drugs for prevention of uh, heart disease or prevention of recurrent events. They do, like, fuck all. They don't do anything. Um... There are interventions with, um, like, diabetic medications. Uh, again, they do have an effect, but, again, the the degree to which they have efficacy is mainly reliant on LDL lowering. So, oh, whoops. Uh, the, only fucking, uh, the only fucking drugs or interventions that have the biggest effect on heart disease risk or cardiac events, again, is with LDL lowering. So why is he saying, oh, well, it's inflammation. Oh, well, it's metabolic dysfunction. We have trials on this. And those trials that attack uh, different targets for preventing heart disease or recurrent events, they're not as effective as targets for cholesterol lowering. With drugs, when there's problems with doing that, that are not being discussed openly by these other parties, including Derek on the podcast. So there's, those are, we need to understand risk versus reward, and we need to understand the actual mechanisms. Practically nobody has side effects from taking statins. Uh, statins are extremely safe. You very, very rarely ever see contraindicators where the, the effects of the drugs are worse than the outcome of having higher LDL before we make extreme treatment decisions. And I think that's one of the major problems that we're seeing with this, this other model that's being, that's being pushed. It's like, it's just LDL, we just need to smash it. And it's like, but there's all these paradoxes. So like, why don't we try to understand what's going on instead of really just honing on this one thing? Like for me, it's, it doesn't make any sense to just go. Well, gee, I don't know. Maybe it's because there are smarter people than you that are actual cardiologists and lipidologists who actually know how these fucking diseases work, who've done these fucking trials, who've looked at the data, who are smarter than you, know more than you, you dumb, retarded fuck, and they've come to the accurate conclusion that LDL is causal in heart disease. This fucking asshole, who isn't even a cardiologist or a lipidologist, is saying, why are all these stupid fucking experts that have spent decades researching this topic like, like, why are they doing this when I don't know anything about any anything I'm talking about? They should just be doing something else. What, like, next time you go to a garage and there's something wrong with your car and you bring it to the mechanic and they tell you, oh, yeah, it looks like your, distri- your distributor's fucked or something. Tell them, well, um, maybe it's not the distributor. Maybe it's like the fucking doohickey that goes like this. Did you check that? Uh, maybe just do that. No, don't do the don't do the the thing that you diagnose. Don't replace the distributor. Uh, look at some other part of the engine. The the thing that goes like this, the cam arms. It, just replace the cam arms. Uh. Like, are you going to do that? Like, when you know nothing about fucking cars, you're not a mechanic, and the fucking mechanic who has expertise in this tells you, we diagnosed this, this is the problem, if you replace this part, your your car's going to be fixed. That's exactly what this fucking idiot is doing. 
He is not a fucking cardiologist, not a lipidologist, and he's fucking telling the experts, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Clearly it's something else because I, I looked at rat studies. What a, sh just what a shithead. Oh my God, those people irritate the fuck out of me.